Hey y'all, I'm Robin. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are talking about a whole bunch of March releases. March is always a huge release month and this year is no different. I have a huge list of books that I am really excited about that are coming out this month. I do want to apologize if it is kind of loud. We are having a bit of a winter storm. The plows are out and there's I have no other time to film, so we're just kind of rolling with it. But without further rambling, let's get right into the March releases. So starting right away on March 3rd, there are three books that I am highly anticipating. The first one is Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. I have already read this, but this is the follow-up to It Happened One Summer. So in this, we are following the sister of the heroine from book one and the best friend of the hero. The heroine is coming back to the small town in order to film a movie that she is working on and she needs a place to stay so she ends up staying with the hero and they have a forced proximity of friends to lovers romance. This book is not only a really really great romance but it also addresses how we see ourselves and how society sees us. There are huge huge trigger warnings for sexualization and verbal abuse of the hero. The hero is sexualized by everyone around him and there are a lot of derogatory things that are said about him, so trigger warnings for that, but if you loved book one, definitely have this one on your radar. The next book on March 3rd is Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter, and this is a new adult rom-com, and I have my laptop off to the side so that I can read the synopses for these, because the synopses are a lot better than my rambly attempts at trying to summarize these books. So this one says that it is New Girl Meets Trainwreck and a hilarious and steamy rom-com. Bad luck has always followed Olivia, or maybe she's just the screw-up of her family that she thinks she is, when a what-are-you-wearing text from a random wrong number turns into the hottest, most entertaining, albeit anonymous relationship of her life she thinks might be on an upswing. Colin has always considered Olivia his best friend's annoying little sister, but when she moves in with them after one of her worst, worst runs of luck, he realizes that she has turned into an altogether different and sexier distraction. He's sure he can keep his distance until the moment he discovers she's the irresistible Miss Mistyle that he's been sort of sexting for weeks. Now he has to decide whether to turn the heat up or ghost her before things get messy. I love romances that involved like texting or emails or letters and things like that, like epistolary romances, and I'm really, really excited for another another one of these romances. The final book on this list is Gallant by V.E. Schwab, and I talked about this in a lot of release videos. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I still don't understand the synopsis for this. I'm gonna read it to you because I can't give a synopsis for this because it's very confusing. The synopsis for this one says, Olivia has grown up in a school for girls and all she has of her past is her mother's journal, which seems to unravel into madness. When a letter invites Olivia to come home to Gallant, when she arrives, no one is expecting her, but Olivia is not about to leave the first place that feels like home. It doesn't matter if her cousin is hostile or if she sees half-formed ghouls haunting the hallways. Olivia knows that Gallant is hiding secrets and she is determined to uncover them. When she crosses a ruined wall at just the right moment, Olivia finds herself in a place that is gallant, but not. The manor is crumbling, the ghouls are solid, and a mysterious figure rules over all. Now Olivia sees what has unraveled generations of her family and where her father may have come from. Olivia has always wanted to belong somewhere, but will she take her place as a prior, protecting our world against the master of the house, or will she take her place beside him? Moving on to March 8th, we have three more books that I am anticipating. The first one is If You Ask Me by Libby Huster. Huster? I am really, really bad with names and I need to listen to the audiobook to figure out the correct pronunciation, but I will have a picture of the cover up here. This one says that when an advice columnist picture-perfect life implodes, she opts to go rogue in this hilarious and heartwarming romance. Violet pens Dear Sweetie, which is a very popular advice column in North Carolina, and she has the answer for how to politely handle any difficult situation, until she discovers that her husband has been cheating. Furious and out of sensible solution, she leaves her filter at the door and turns her column into a place where she can air her own frustrations. The new brutal 
brutally honest Dear Sweetie goes viral, sending more shockwaves through her life. When she burns Sam's belongings in the front yard, a smoking hot firefighter shows up to douse the flames, and an unexpected fling quickly shows potential that something longer might last. The second book is A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft. This is the author who wrote Down Comes the Night, and while I didn't love that book, I really liked the writing and the atmosphere, and so I'm excited to give this author's sophomore novel a read because I think that she could be like an author that I really, really love. This one is a romantic YA fantasy. It says, Margaret spots the legendary Hala, the last living magical creature, and she knows that the half moon hunt will soon follow. Whoever is able to kill the Hala will earn fame and riches and unlock an ancient magic secret. While Margaret is the best sharpshooter in town. Only teams of two can register and she needs an alchemist. Weston isn't an alchemist yet. He's been fired from every apprenticeship he's landed and his last chance hints on Master Welty taking him in. But when Wes arrives at the manor, he finds only Margaret and she begrudgingly allows him to stay on one condition. He must join the hunt with her. Although they make an unlikely team, they soon find themselves drawn to each other. As the hunt looms closer and tensions rise, the two of them uncover dark magic that could be the key to winning the hunt if they survive that long. And then the final book that I have on my radar is Lake Lore by A.M. Micklemore. This is A.M.'s latest speculative fantasy-esque story. I never know what to classify their stories as because they kind of cross between contemporary and fantasy in this like beautifully written magical story. And this one sounds just as whimsical as all of their books. So the synopsis for this one says that it is a YA novel set in a magical world underneath a lake. When the older sibling moves out, the younger sibling has one job to protect the world they've shared since they were children. For years, the world underneath the lake has not been just a magical place, but a safe place for their neurodivergent brain. When somebody else finds their way in, everything changes, and the world under the lake pulls them both in without warning, fracturing the once unshakable bond between the siblings. Now they must do anything that they can to hide the secrets from above and below the surface, and they try to hold the worlds together and figure out how much they will risk for magic. This sounds beautiful. I love AM's writing and I'm really excited to pick this one up. On to March 15th, we have six books <laughs> coming out that I'm really excited about and this is after I narrowed it down because I had a ton of other ones on my radar. This is a huge release day. Starting with book number one, we have Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This is an author who has written a lot of other mystery thrillers. They've written Broken Girls and The Sundown Motel, and one of my favorite things about Simone St. James is they always play with timelines and the same thing is happening in this book. So this one says, a true crime blogger gets more than she bargained for while interviewing the woman acquitted of two cold cases. In 1977, Blair Lake, Oregon was shaken by the lady killer murders. Two men, seemingly random, were murdered with the same gun with strange notes left behind. Beth was the perfect subject, a rich, eccentric 23-year-old seeing fleeing from one of the crimes, but she was acquitted and retreated to the isolation of her mansion. In 2017, Shay is a receptionist, but by night she runs a true crime website, The Book of Cold Cases, a passion fueled by the attempted abduction she escaped as a child. When she meets Beth by chance, Shay asks her for an interview, and to her surprise, Beth says yes. They meet at Beth's mansion, and though Shay is uncomfortable here, items seem to move she, when she's not looking, and she could swear that there is a girl outside of her window. But the allure of learning the truth about the case is too much to resist. Even as they grow closer, Shay senses something isn't right. Is she making friends with a manipulative murderer, or are there other dangers lurking in the darkness? Next up on March 15 is War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the fourth book in the From Blood and Ash series. I am tentatively putting this one here. I, fun fact, hated book three. I hated it. If you don't know anything about this series, this is such a popular series. I'm sure you've heard of it, but it is an adult fantasy romance, and we're in this world where at the beginning of the series our heroine is a maiden, and she has no control over her life, and she thinks that she is working for these good guys, but she sen senses that something is off about them. Everyone believes them to be gods, and they live in this like small town that is kind of like walled in and protecting them from the bad guys outside the wall, and she gets a guard. Things kind of unravel 
from there. I don't want to go too much more into it because there's a lot of like reveals and stuff in the first book that kind of like changes the plot. Um, but that's kind of the setup for book one. This is book four. These books are ridiculously long for no reason. But I feel like I have committed to so many pages that this is this is still tentatively a release that I might be interested in picking up. The next book is The League of Gentlewomen Witches by India Holton. This is the follow-up to the Wisteria Society for Lady Scoundrels. I believe these are going to be companion stories, so they're not necessarily a continuation. So I think we're following totally new characters in here, and I'm just going to read the synopsis for this one because these books are historical fantasy, and they are really, really funny and quirky and strange. So this one says, Miss Charlotte, Charlotte belongs to a secret league of women skilled in the subtle arts, that is to say, although it must never be said, witchcraft. The league strives to improve the world in small ways. Using magic, they tidy, correct, and manipulate according to their notions of what is proper. When the long-lost amulet of Black Barrel is discovered, it is up to Charlotte, as the future leader of the league, to make sure the powerful talisman does not fall into the wrong hands. Therefore, it is most unfortunate when she crosses paths with Alex, a pirate who is no Mr. Darcy. With the whole world scrambling after the amulet, Alex and Charlotte join forces to steal it together. If only they could keep their pickpocketing hands to themselves. The fourth book is I Am Margaret Moore by Hannah Kappen, and this is another author that I have read before. This author wrote Foul is Fair, which is a fantastic revenge story, and this is their next novel, and it says that four friends are excited about the summer ahead of them until the events of the previous year come back to haunt them in a twisty paranormal thriller love that. It says, I am a girl. I am a monster too. Each summer, the girls of Deck 5 come back to Marshall Naval School. They sail on the blue waters, they march on the green fields, and they earn sunburns and honors. They push until they break apart and heal together stronger. Each summer, Margaret, Rose, Floor, and Nisreen come back to the place where they are girls safe away from the world, sisters bound by something more than blood. But this summer, everything changes. The girls are missing and a boy is dead. It's because of Margaret Moore, the boys say. It is because of what happened that night in the storm. Margaret's friends vanished one by one, swallowed up by the lies she has told about what happened between her and a boy with the world at his feet. Can she unravel the secrets of this summer at last, or will she be pulled under by the place she once called home? It is a lyrical and haunting paranormal thriller that tests the holds of sisterhood and truth. I loved Hannah Kappen's writing and Foul is Fair. I know it didn't work for everyone, but I am really, really excited to see what, what this next book looks like. The second to last book on this is Sadie on a Plate by Amanda Elliott, and this is another adult rom-com. This one says Sadie is a rising star in the trendy Seattle restaurant scene. Her dream is to create unique, modern, and mouth-watering takes on traditional Jewish recipes. But after a public breakup with her boss, a famous chef, she is unsure if her career is over until she lands a coveted spot on the next season of her favorite TV show. On the plane to New York, Sadie has a sizzling chemistry with her seatmate, Luke, but tells him that she won't be able to contact him for the next six weeks. They prolong their night with a spontaneous and magical dinner before parting ways, or so she thinks. When she turns up at the set, she makes a shocking discovery about who Luke is. If Sadie wants to save her career by winning the show, she's going to have to ignore the simmering heat between her and Luke. But how long can she do that before the pot boils over? And then the final book for this day is The Cartographers by Peng Shepard, and this is the author of, I think, The Book of M, and that that book was always on my radar, but I never ended up getting around to it, and this one sounds so intriguing. It is a fantasy standalone, which I love, and it says that it is a highly imaginative thriller about a young woman who discovers that a strange map and her deceased father's belonging holds an incredibly deadly secret, one that will lead her on an extraordinary adventure to the truth about her family's dark history. And then the little tagline is, what is the purpose of a map? I just think that this is such a fascinating concept for a story and it is a standalone. Finally, on to March 22nd, I only have two books coming out this day that I'm excited about. The first being The City of Dusk by Tara Sim. This is a new fantasy story. I believe it is the start of a series and this says that it is set in a gorgeous world of bone and shadow magic, of vengeful gods, and defiant chosen ones. The City of Dusk follows four heirs of four noble houses, each gifted with a divine power 
power as they form a tenuous alliance to keep their kingdom from descending into a realm-shattering war. I believe in this series the gods have kind of like abandoned this world and we are following the four heirs who are kind of trying to save the kingdom. I'm really excited for the start of a new fantasy series. The last book for this day is The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Miller. Again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that last name right. This says that it is a fascinating whodunit set in a lush gothic world of secrets and magic. That's really all I need to know. Where a dying emperor charges his favorite concubine with solving his murder and preventing the culprit, who is undoubtedly one of his three terrible sons, from taking control of the empire. Honestly, all I needed to know was lush gothic fantasy and that's it. That's all I needed to know. But I'm really, really excited to give this one a read. And then on to the last release date, March 29th, there are two final books that I'm excited about. The first being Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. And this is a historical fantasy romance. And it says, in the aftermath of World War One, a naive woman is swept into a glittering world filled with dark magic, romance, and murder in this lush and decadent debut. On Crow Island, people whisper, real magic lurks beneath the surface. Neither real magic nor fake magic interests Annie, not after it stole her future. She's only on the island to settle her late father's estate and hopefully reconnect with her long absent best friend who fled their dreary lives for a more glamorous one. Yet Crow Island is brimming with temptation and the biggest one is her new neighbor. Mysterious and alluring, Emmeline is a figure shadowed by rumors of witchcraft. And when Annie witnesses a confrontation between Bay and Emmeline at one of the island's extravagant parties, she is drawn into a glittering and haunted world. A world where the boundaries of wickedness are tested and the cost of illicit magic might be death. This really gives me like 1920s Great Gatsby vibes and I'm just really excited for like a magical take on this time period. And then the final book is The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. This is the start of a new fantasy series. Katie Robert has been slowly working into the monster romance genre and this is her first release in that series. We did get a little sneak peek of this start of the series at the end of Queen, which is her vampire series. And I am, I'm very, very excited for this. I don't know a ton about this because I, I don't want to read the synopsis. Katie Roberts' books are usually uh, like small on the plot and big on steam, so I don't want to know too much about the plot in this one. But I believe in this our heroine is promised to a really, really terrible man and she ends up being saved or captured by this dragon and the two of them have a romance. And I'm just really excited to see Katie Roberts' take on monster romance. So that is it for all of the March releases. Let me know if you have any any of these on your TBR or radar. Let me know if there are any other releases that you are super excited for because I would like to add them to my TBR as well. And I will catch you all in my next video. Bye!